The hemophilian thrombosis center laboratory was the first pediatric coagulation lab west of the Mississippi. Our investigators are all united in their passion for ultimate good patient outcomes and a sense of wellness. But our focus is very broad and we focus on hemophilia, platelet defects and von Willebrand's disease, women's bleeding, thrombosis, stroke, um, and acquired bleeding disorders. One of the things that we're trying to do is create blood vessels on a chip. What we do is we try to recreate the anatomy and physiology in a miniature form on a microchip and then create bleeds and try to see how different people's blood reacts to those bleeds or how different therapeutics might uh, affect those bleeds. In other applications uh, towards not solving bleeding problems but solving clotting problems, uh, we've developed a drug delivery technology that we call microwheels. And so these are magnetically powered discs that look like wheels. And the wheels, we drive them along blood vessels to clots, and then those wheels can ablate a clot. And they can do that at a rate that's 50 to 100 fold faster than the way it's done clinically. We very intimately integrate uh, patient care with research so that almost all of our persons with hemophilia and bleeding disorders participate in defining what the questions uh, in, in the next phase of their life is going to be. In our lab, you use patient samples to understand abnormalities, but then we try to study those abnormalities, maybe find ways that we can modify it or change it um, or alter some of those properties and then potentially kind of expand it back into a patient in the form of a treatment, a new diagnostic tool, um, something like that, that can then provide clinical benefit for those patients. So my passion in the work that I do is uh, focused on von Willebrand's disease, and I approach it from two different levels, understanding it on a very clinical level and treating patients who have von Willebrand's disease. And I approach that um, and marry that with a focus in the research labs about studying the actual protein that causes von Willebrand's disease. Our program is uh, uh, identified as being very patient-centric. So we ask the individual what their goals and aspirations are and then help guide and direct our research to achieve what they've laid out as their goal. What we know so far is that for youth with bleeding disorder diagnoses, they're reporting higher uh, symptoms of anxiety, depression, and behavior concerns compared to their healthy peers. We know a lot about the link between mental or behavioral health and medical outcomes for other illness groups but we're still really scratching the surface here for the bleeding disorder population. My goal is to help develop a model so that we can have a roadmap to really harness the power of behavioral health and improving overall well-being. We also started in the 80s um, taking uh, individuals with extreme joint problems uh, and, and chronic pain problems and explored how far we could go with hiking. And we hiked 14,000 foot mountains and we backpacked and we went camping for 10 day stretches. In Colorado, we said all goals are possible. My focus is um, trying to figure out the mechanics of bleeding and why people bleed and if there are ways that we can optimize how people move to prevent bleeding. So we're working on technologies currently to use these um, inertial measurement units which are basically like accelerometers that also measure rotation. So we're hoping to be able to use these in the future to monitor how people move um, wherever they are. Our program has been involved in uh, a lot of uh, wet laboratory uh, research in hemophilia. So I think uh, we have contributed a lot in understanding many of the proteins, including factor VIII, von Willebrand's fibrinogen, protein C, protein S. The way we're studying platelets right now is by identifying, characterizing, understanding what, what's the metabolism of a platelet, how are these metabolic pathways behaving on their health and disease, so can we target those metabolic pathways to improve the way we make playlists behave? Uh, or the other part is if those playlists are just too dysfunctional, they cannot activate properly, can we boost that through metabolic pathways? We have a very active exchange between the basic laboratory and, and the bedside. And so we are constantly translating our information from the patient to the lab and, and then uh, back again. Asking about pain and managing pain is not necessarily uh, part of what we think of when we think of a, a hemophilia and thrombosis center. And I've been on a mission to try to change that. The most memorable uh, patient story that, that comes to mind is a, uh, an older patient who I, I saw as a fellow who said, 
you know, living with hemophilia means living with pain. And that was a wake-up call. Our goal is to decrease preventable complications. Women with bleeding disorders have a lot of unique needs when compared to biological males with bleeding disorders. One of the most defining features is that they are more likely to have heavy periods and have problems with childbirth. We have a clinic that allows patients to come across the whole lifespan. So whether they are just having their first period or had a bleeding disorder for their whole life, you can come to our clinic and see the same doctors throughout your lifespan and get the same access to our comprehensive services. We use science to guide us as we push the limits on what persons with hemophilia can do. Our focus has expanded to platelet and von Willebrand disorders, women's bleeding, adult pain and activity, thrombosis and stroke with the same enthusiasm for improved patient outcomes.